The winter of 2015 will be remembered as one of the most brutal. Just last week, we had record low temperatures with wind chills in the negative numbers. Well, fortunately, more, many organizations across Delmarva have made it a priority to provide a warm place to sleep for our area's homeless. There's another organization in Salisbury that is taking that notion a step further. For a quarter century, Village of Hope has followed through on a mission to guide homeless women into an independent and productive life. That is why the Village of Hope is this week's Delmarva treasure. Sister Pat, Sister Marilyn mm -hmm. is still on the board and she's very active out here. She Village of Hope Interim Executive Director Jim Fennerin has seen most of the facility's history firsthand. It was the vision of Sister Mary Elizabeth Gentling of the Little Sisters of Jesus and Mary. Originally it was uh, a residence for homeless men mm -hmm. and of course now it's for uh, formerly homeless women and children. Started with one building, which is now our apartments, uh, where our women who are in our transitional living program live, that's their home. And then this administration building was added later on, has been used for, for a lot of different things. Including a medical and dental clinic. But Fennerin says they were unable to afford to keep them open. The building is now used for programs that set Village of Hope apart from traditional homeless shelters. Here we are not uh, an emergency shelter. Even though our residents may have been homeless, once they're admitted here, they now have a home. And we want them to stay here and participate in our Steps to Success program, which is a, a two-year transitional living program. In addition to having a place for the women and their children to live, the program provides parenting classes, life skills education workshops, on-site counseling, and mentoring for their children. Residents also have access to a community room and a playroom for the children. Potential residents are screened cautiously. What I want to do is find women who want to turn their lives around from, from where they are before the Village of Hope and make it much, much better uh, when they leave us after two years. Women like Ebony McKeithen. This was a great story of a young woman who came to us with her very small child and um, over the period of two years left us last spring. Uh, she's now working as an EMT and uh, she's kind of a Village of Hope celebrity. But Finneran admits not everyone succeeds. We're drawing from a homeless population basically. Uh, women with some very difficult backgrounds. And that means that they're not all going to be successful. It probably means that, you know, maybe 50, 60 percent of them will be. That's fine. Uh, besides being a place where success is the ultimate achievement, it's also a good opportunity for people who, who don't succeed and don't fit in the program to be exposed to it for a year, maybe a little bit longer. Village of Hope relies solely on donations. We have a really generous donor base. We just wrapped up a really gratifying and successful annual campaign, probably the best one we've ever had. Uh, we rely very heavily on the United Way for uh, annual support. Uh, the Community Foundation has been extremely generous to us uh, for programs and improvements. Improving our community by improving lives, making Village of Hope a Delmarva treasure. Another way Village of Hope raises money to operate is through a fun event called the Great Clue Caper. It's a scavenger hunt held throughout Wicomico County. Teams compete to solve puzzles, search for clues, complete activities, and arrive at the finish before time runs out. The winning team will receive $2,000, $1,000 to keep, and $1,000 to donate to the charity of their choice. And for more information on Village of Hope and the Great Clue Caper, go to our website, WBOC.com. Click on our picture at the top of the page. And Jimmy, this year's uh, Clue Caper is yeah. April 12th. A thousand to keep, a thousand to give yes. away. I just think that's so neat. It is. I like that. Well, there's something else on Delmarva that used to be considered a treasure. The many mill ponds, take a look here from Chopper 16, that once served a grand purpose for the lumber and agriculture industries. But times have changed. They're no longer used for that. 
Up next, you're going to find out what the future holds for these mill ponds. And Jimmy, our future holds some tasty food. <laughs> mm. A little later, we're in the Delmarva Life kitchen making baked oysters. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back. <laughs>